Hey there, welcome to today's video where we're going to be taking a look at how to grow mushrooms outside. So we're currently in the middle of refitting parts of our farm at the moment and as part of that we've had to empty out um, the rest of the bags that we had left uh, in our fruiting room and in the fridge and we basically didn't have any space to put them at the moment so we just put them outside here in this barn. You can see that we're in here. Um, it's just open sided so it's open to all the elements and I thought it would provide a good opportunity just to talk a little bit about how you can grow mushrooms outside uh, without needing a climate controlled room. Now you can obviously grow mushrooms outside in outdoor mushroom beds which we have a separate video on um, and you can grow them on logs as well but what I want to talk about today is how you can grow them in the same sorts of ways that you grow them inside whether it's in buckets or growing bags um, and the sorts of things that you need to do to provide the right conditions and the main issues that you're likely to run into. So let's just have a quick look around how we've got it set up here at the moment. It's pretty much how we would do normally inside the fruiting room. We've just moved the rails and the shelving outside. And as you can see, we're just in a barn area. So it's pretty open to all the elements. And all we're doing in here at the moment to uh, provide the right conditions for these bags is we're just spraying them down with water uh, two or three times a day to keep them humidified. So um, normally when you're in a climate controlled fruiting room, the main conditions that you need to provide um, are humidity, light, uh, fresh air exchange, and to some degree temperature uh, control, depending on what part of the world you live in and what time of year it is. So when you're going to be growing mushrooms outside without that climate control, you need to still try and provide these same conditions. So I'm just going to walk through those conditions one by one and discuss how you can grow them outside in a way that meets with what you need in order for them to fruit properly. Um, so first up, let's just discuss the easier ones. So light, obviously, if you're going to grow outside, you're going to have some form of natural light and you usually then don't need to worry about supplementing that with anything in addition. Obviously, you don't want to be in, in uh, direct sunlight because that's going to be too hot and dry. Um, so any naturally shaded spot that you can find that's already um, sheltered from the sun and already maybe has some kind of natural humidity, that's ideal. So obvious places for this, if you have that kind of room, are underneath trees or shrubby areas. Um, if you have access to woodland, then that can be a good spot for it as well because it's already naturally quite humid and shaded in those sort of places. Following on from light, the next one is uh, fresh air exchange, which um, is really important if you're growing inside a climate controlled room because the levels of CO2 can build up very quickly. Uh, which are emitted from, from the substrate as the mushrooms are growing. Obviously, that's not such an issue when you're growing outside as well because there's plenty of fresh air all around, so that's not um, a condition that you need to control all that much. Then if we have a look at um, temperature, again, um, you don't really need to do too much with this when you're growing outside if you just pick the right times of the year in which to do it, whereby it's either not too cold or not too hot, depending on the species that you're growing. Um, in most temperate parts of the world, that's going to be uh, spring um, and autumn for sure. And, and depending on where you are, you can also grow through the summer and the winter like this. For years, we've grown um, just small amounts outside during the winter months. We'll just place bags out there. They grow really, really slowly, but they do grow fine um, as long as it's above two degrees Celsius. And likewise, in the summer in the UK, here, it never gets that hot. Um, so even on a heat wave, it will be only up to about 28 or 30 degrees Celsius. And we've grown many different um, summer oysters like that outside as well. So temperature is not too difficult to control. Then let's have a look at humidity. Humidity is really, really important for mushrooms to grow properly. And most regions of the world don't have high enough natural humidity in order for the mushrooms to fruit. So you're going to need to provide that in some way. Like I said before, if you've got a naturally humid environment, that goes a long way to help him. What we've done here um, is probably the simplest option, and we're just doing it because we don't have a lot of time to set up a proper humidification system. We're just spraying them with water once, or once to three times a day. Um, so we're just doing that with a garden hose on a sprinkler setting and giving them a really good soak. So we've recently done that, and you can see um, on the tops of the caps here, the moisture just kind of sits and humidifies the mushrooms reasonably well. Now the problem with just using a really simple setup like that is that the mushrooms will uh, dry out during the periods in between the humidification. So 
Um, I'm just going to show you what that looks like over here. There's a few examples where the caps have dried out. And these are the ones which are on the edge of the space here. I think they probably get a bit more uh, wind and that's what's drying them out. So you can see that it um, doesn't provide the ideal conditions all of the time. And obviously the problem with that is uh, you're gonna get much lower yields if the mushrooms are drying out. Um, at the extreme, they'll just stop growing altogether. Now, if you wanted to provide the humidity in a bit more of, of a regular fashion, you could fix up a system of mist nozzles um, on a timer just to be spraying uh, mist and humidity all over your mushrooms as they start to fruit and you could set that timer up on fairly regular intervals you know every five minutes every 15 minutes every half an hour um, you just need to play around with it a little bit it depends on your ambient humidity and we've done that in the past um, to pretty good effect we years ago you can see in these pictures here we built a an outdoor fruiting area which was covered with shade netting and we set up a system of mist, mist nozzles on a timer to spray every 15 minutes a little bit of moisture and that provided really good humidity it was almost constantly at around about 80 to 90 percent humidity and the mushrooms grew really well like that so you can see that humidity is easy enough to supply if you've just got the water supply um, and some regular humidification now the most difficult thing of all to deal with when you're growing outside is pest control and that's really the thing that pushes uh, most people to not grow outside on a regular basis and the main pests you're going to encounter are mushroom flies um, and to some degree slugs as well. And that was actually the problem with this fruit and room that you can see the pictures here. Um, although it grew really, really well outside for quite a few weeks, after about a month or so, we began to see problems with um, mushroom flies, which they obviously can smell the spores in the air and they start to arrive and then they breed really, really quickly. And before you know it, you have hundreds and then thousands of these little mushroom flies that lay their eggs inside the mushrooms, the larvae develop, and then they eat the mushrooms from the inside out and basically ruin the crop. And it's really, really difficult to stop mushroom flies from arriving in a space that's not sealed off. When you're growing in indoor climate controlled areas, you can easily uh, filter the air that's coming in and that will prevent any uh, flies from coming in. And obviously the whole space is sealed, but when you're doing that outside, it's a lot more difficult difficult to control. You can, of course, try and do that with insect netting. And if you look at these pictures here, you'll see an outdoor mushroom bed that we created a year or so ago that we grew outside in the summertime. And the way that we made that work uh, was by basically making a little hoop house and then covering that with really fine insect mesh netting to stop the flies from getting in. And that was actually really quite effective. It still, however, ended up with slugs in because they... Even, no matter how well you manage to um, cover the, the whole thing, you'll still get slugs that kind of slime their way in over the side and in, and they hide underneath the bags. And unless you go in there and check them regularly, you'll find that you will uh, develop a problem with slugs. And slugs absolutely love mushrooms. They'll go through the crop quite quickly. And of course, they also uh, multiply really fast as well. All right, so where does that leave us at the end and conclusion to all of this? I hope you can see it's absolutely possible to grow mushrooms outside like this. As you can see, we've got a few kilos beginning to develop here that will be ready in the next couple of days. And in the past, as you can see from these photos as well, we've grown quite decent crops outside um, in the spring to autumn months using a fairly basic setup. And this is absolutely possible to do on a fairly small scale. However, you will encounter problems in particular with pests um, and that's the reason why I wouldn't recommend this as an ongoing method of production. If you want to uh, produce mushrooms to sell, I'd really recommend uh, thinking about building a more controlled environment in which you can make sure you provide the conditions that you need. However, if you just want to grow a few mushrooms for yourself at home, um, for friends and family, or just to have a little bit of fun with, definitely consider this as just a really easy way to get started doing something at low cost um, without too much commitment. So if you're interested to find out uh, more about how to grow mushrooms in this way, check out the links below this video. Um, download the ebook we have about how to set up a low-tech mushroom farm and see what you can do. All right, thanks a lot for joining us today. We'll see you in the next video.